So iPad OS 13.4 brought mouse and trackpad support to iPad. And you probably already know that you can use just about any Bluetooth or USB mouse that you already have. But did you know that you can actually customize the look of the cursor and even the buttons on the mouse itself? Well, I'm gonna show you. Hey everyone, my name is Jerry, and I'm gonna show you how to customize the cursor of your mouse on iPad OS and customize the buttons on the mouse. But before we do, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. That way you get updates on new videos, including what's coming up next week at WWDC. Now, let's get started. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is configure the basic mouse settings. To do that, we're gonna to go to settings, click on general, then click on trackpad and mouse. If you have a trackpad connected, you'd have other options available. But for a mouse, we're just gonna have tracking speed, which obviously changes how fast the cursor moves around your screen. We have natural scrolling, which you can reverse the scrolling direction on your mouse. And we have secondary click. And by changing this, this will effectively turn my mouse into a left-hand mouse. But we're not gonna change that here because I'm not ambidextrous. And if we do, we're gonna be here all day. So that's the basic mouse settings that we have. Now we're gonna change the look of the mouse itself. To do that, we're gonna go back to the main settings menu. We're gonna click on accessibility. Then we'll go down to pointer control. In here, we have a number of different options to change the look of the cursor on the iPad. The first thing we can do is change the contrast. By toggling this box, this changes the cursor from a lighter gray to a little bit darker gray. And then down below, we have automatic hide pointer or automatically hide pointer, which after 10 seconds will have the cursor disappear. We also have color and that's where things get more fun. By default, it's set to none, but if we choose any of these six colors listed here, we get a ring around our cursor. So if we choose red, we get a nice red ring around it, which makes the cursor easier to see and feels more personal. I'm kind of partial to orange lately, so I'm gonna choose orange for today. And down here, we can change the size of the ring around the cursor itself, so we can make it larger or smaller. I kind of like it where it was by default. Now, because of the way the cursor works inside iPad OS, it snaps to certain objects. Well, with a color assigned, it actually creates a colored border around those selected objects, which is kind of neat. I'll show you right now. So if we move up to the options that we would snap to, you can see that not only is the item grayed or selected, it also has the colored ring around it, which makes the item easier to tell that you have it selected. If we move up to the notification shade button or over to control center, you can see that it just kind of snaps and outlines the items for you, making it really easy to tell what you have selected. If we go back to the pointer options, we can also change the pointer size. This adjusts the entire size of the cursor itself which makes it either comically large or you know wherever you feel comfortable. We'll try it out a little bit bigger than normal and see how it goes. Down here we have pointer animations. By disabling the pointer animations, that disables the snap effect that you get with the certain objects like we just looked at. So if we turn that off, we'll no longer get that snap effect or the colored border around the items that we're hovering over. And down at the bottom, we can change the scrolling speed, which just changes how fast you scroll up and down on a web page or inside a menu. Now to customize the buttons on the mouse, we actually have to enable assistive touch, which does have one downside and I'll get into that in a minute. To get to the assistive touch settings, you go back to accessibility and go to touch. In here, we choose assistive touch and we enable it. To configure the buttons on the mice, we go down here to pointer devices and click on devices. Here is where you will see the mouse that you have connected. And in here, we have customized additional buttons. What's gonna happen when we click on that is it's going to prompt us to click a button on the mouse that we want to customize. We are then given a list of functions that can be assigned to those buttons. The first button that I'm going to customize is going to be the scroll button. So I'm going to click here. It's gonna ask which button I want to customize. I'm going to press it. And I like to assign the home button for this option. Now, no matter where I'm at in any app, I can just press down on the scroll wheel and I can get to home. It's super simple. I really like that a lot. And What's more is you can double press the button and get to the recent app screen, which makes it really easy to jump back to a previous app and to multitask. Now, some of these other options that are available in here may not be super useful to you because these are made for people with disabilities or people who have motor function issues that may not be able to do everything that you know somebody with 10 fingers does on the iPad. But there are some useful items in here to assign to the other buttons. Next, we're going to assign a function to this button right here. And what I'm going to choose is to create screenshots. So we're going to click customize additional buttons, press the button that we want to modify. We're gonna scroll down to create screenshot. 
And now this button, whenever I press it, should automatically take a screenshot. And from there I can annotate it or send it to somebody or save it to my photo library. So we'll just press it right here. And right there we get our screenshot. We can go down here. And now we can interact with it just like we would with any other screenshot. And for the last button on this mouse, I'm going to assign it to volume down. I find sometimes that I'm listening to something and something's too loud or I'm listening at night and I need to quickly turn down the volume. And instead of trying to fumble around and find the small volume button, I can just press the button on the mouse and bring the volume down. So we'll click volume down. Now you should be able to see the volume change on the iPad. So that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. So those are just some examples of how you can customize the cursor and the mouse buttons themselves. But I did mention that enabling assistive touch does have a little bit of a downside, and that is that it leaves a faded gray orb on the screen. So by enabling assistive touch, it actually creates a menu that sits floating on the screen. Now, I think by default, the opacity is set to 15%, so it's grayed out and it's pretty transparent. It's difficult to see most of the time but it is something that has to stay on the screen. There's no way to get rid of it with assistive touch on. So if you want to modify the buttons on your mice or on your mouse, then you have to have this thing running around the screen. It's easy to ignore it after a while. It just kind of fades into the background. If you end up finding it's in an annoying spot, you can move it basically anywhere you want around the edges of the screen. So you can reduce any accidental touches, but it is there, so it is something to be aware of. You can kind of just barely see it on the screen down here. So anyway, that's my video today on how to customize the cursor inside iPadOS and how to modify the buttons on your mouse. If you found this helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. You can follow me on Twitter at Jerry Schultz for video updates and hit subscribe. If you decided to customize your cursor and your mouse buttons inside iPadOS, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.